worries. Uh, so I will introduce the next speakers, uh, who are Jenna Rosica and Claire Chauffour. Uh, so Claire Chauffour is from SNCF, and uh, after some exp experience in the uh, automotive sectors uh, many years, uh, as a research um, uh, engineer in noise and vibration in engines, uh, she joined the SNCF Innovation and Research Department. Uh, and to work mainly on environmental noise, but not only. And Gennaro is a P, uh, has a PhD in ground bond vibration uh, from railway construction and operation. Um, uh, he, and he has uh, seven years of experience in the uh, HS2, uh, focusing on specific, specification acoustics of acoustics and system integration. So um, Gennaro and um, Claire, the floor is yours for the next paper. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, UIC, uh, for having us. Uh, thank you, Baldrick, for uh, the introduction uh, to the kind word. And uh, my name is Gennaro Ziga. I'm uh, acoustic and senior acoustic engineer at HS2, and I will do this presentation with Claire. Uh, Hello, everybody. And, yeah, this one will be a sort of like uh, Double act. We wanted to, uh, you know, to spice things up. Uh, so, can we go to the next slide, please? Uh, so, uh, this is what uh, uh, we are going to talk about uh, in this presentation, which is about aerodynamic noise. So, we're going to uh, set, let's say, the scene of the problem. Then, I'm going to talk about uh, noise mechanism. Then, uh, Claire is going to introduce uh, the location of noise sources and the modeling approach. Then I'm going to be back uh, for uh, describing the measurement method and the current uh, open point, uh, mostly linked to uh, the TDI white paper. And then finally, we're going to have Claire uh, to uh, introduce the Aero Noise project. So uh, next slide, please. So. Uh, of course, uh, uh, there is uh, uh, there are plans uh, uh, currently uh, to uh, run high-speed train up to 360 kilometers per hour. For example, uh, one example is uh, HS2, uh, which uh, uh, the top speed uh, of the, the railway is uh, 360 kilometers per hour. But also, in Europe, uh, we have a, a project of uh, trans-European high-speed network, where the maximum speed is 350 km per hour. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, this uh, uh, is generating a concern for the community uh, living uh, next to the railway uh, regarding the noise impact. And uh, us as a railway operator and infrastructure, we need to be a good neighbor and uh, do everything we can uh, in order to minimize this noise. Also because uh, the generally uh, the regional policy might require a future uh, uh, further uh, no noise reduction, which can be achieved or either uh, 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 specifying uh, and uh, by a rolling stock, which is quieter than TSI, or uh, provide you know more mitigation measure uh, within uh, uh, the scheme which might have uh, some other uh, some other uh, kind of impact in terms of uh, landscape and carbon footprint of course uh, the high speed train uh, the very high speed uh, train transport uh, has introduced a new challenge like uh, we will see in the next slide uh, mainly related to the multiplication of noise sources and also a uh, very complex uh, source mechanism. Uh, the, la the last point, of course, is that now uh, Rolling Stock Commission are evaluated uh, using ISO uh, 1395, which is also the base of uh, TSI uh, in terms of measuring uh, methodology, uh, which is a method, a standard which is uh, uh, useful in order to characterize an overall noise pass by, but uh, is uh, uh, this uh, uh, standard able to identify and characterize high speed noise sources? Next slide. Uh, so 
uh, in, for a, a, a conventional railway uh, with a speed which are which is below uh, 250 km per hour uh, generally we have uh, two main sorts of noise coming from uh, the traction and equipment noise and then from the rolling noise uh, but uh, when we increase the speed above uh, 250 km per hour uh, we start uh, uh, like uh, like you can see uh, in the classical graph uh, in the slide uh, we have like uh, an increase of uh, aerodynamic uh, noise sources uh, until you know 300 km per hour when there is uh, uh, at least uh, uh, the aerodynamic noise overtaking the rolling noise which is going to be always uh, you know there uh, so uh, the aerodynamic noise is uh, caused by uh, the flow of the air over the train as it travel. Uh, so this one uh, it generate uh, turbulent flow, which is gonna have uh, frequency in the audible range, and so this is uh, is gonna cause noise. And uh, one thing that is very important uh, to say is that the uh, aerodynamic noise depend on the train and its design. So it's a particular feature of the train. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is uh, a little bit more uh, uh, clear, uh, I hope, uh, in this slide. Uh, on the top of, uh, of uh, in the top graph, uh, there is a, uh, a neat map uh, from an array uh, of a Korean train. Uh, measured at uh, 400 km per hour. And we can say, for example, in the top part of the, of, of the slide, uh, that uh, we, we will have uh, uh, a maximum noise generation in the part of the train where basically there is, a, 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 let's say, an op opportunity for the flow of air uh, to be broken. Uh, and so, uh, uh, for example, the front of the train, the leading boogie, uh, the intercoach uh, inter uh, spacing uh, will be, uh, you know, sorts of aerodynamic noise. But this one uh, will be, uh, this contribution will be captured by the T, uh, by pass by noise measurement according to the SI, but will be just a mix of sources because, for example, even within uh, this array measure uh, the, there is quite a lot of noise generating by the bottom of the train, but we don't know if uh, this is uh, uh, mainly caused by the aerodynamic or by the uh, rolling noise. Uh, so it's also quite important to separate uh, these kind of sources. Then, uh, for example, another player uh, in terms of uh, uh, noise sources from aerodynamic is the noise that is coming from the top of the train, including uh, the pantograph. Uh, this is quite important because these, uh, these sources are not generally mitigated by a noise barrier, which will contain the rest of the noise emission from, uh, uh, from the top bottom part of, uh, of the train. And this one will have a, a quite a big uh, contribution in terms of environmental impact. And this is uh, pretty clear uh, from the bottom of, uh, uh, of uh, the, the bottom graph in the slide, where basically uh, this is the signature of a microphone which is installed on the top of the train. So it's just recording the, the, the noise coming from the top of the train with and without the pantograph. So we can see that uh, when the pantograph is up, uh, we, will, we will have an additional uh, contribution. We will uh, have uh, an impact, especially on the uh, max level. And then uh, what also we found out uh, in HS2 uh, was that the pantograph uh, as, a, uh, as a polarization, which depends on the speed. Uh, so its detectivity change uh, with the speed. Now uh, uh, we are going to have uh, uh, Claire talking a little bit more about location of noise sources. Next slide. Thanks, Gino. So 
Um, here uh, you can see the main uh, location of aerodynamic noise of uh, high speed train. And uh, as you can see here on the slide, um, we have uh, already a good knowledge of the main aerodynamic noise sources. So we can mention the nose of the train, the first bogey, the pantograph, up pantograph, the recess of the pantographs, the intercoach gaps, uh, for example. So it's the main uh, the main location, and all these uh, areas are linked to the areas with where we have the most important flow turbulence due to the high speed airflow against the train. So we have the first bogey and we have also the other bogey, but far along the train, the turbulent flow is decreasing. So the, the, the source, uh, the aerodynamic source uh, uh, linked to the different bogey decrease also. So next slide, please. And uh, as we know uh, the main localization, we have also some idea of which mitigation measure could be efficient to, to reduce the noise. Here you can see some um, Japanese picture. So it's from um, it's studies from RTRI, which is uh, the research uh, department um, in Japan, in Japan uh, concerning railways. Um, and uh, we you can see here a screen, for example, on the top of the train to reduce the noise radiation due to the around the pantograph. Uh, we have also um, uh, the example of a, a closing element, um, closing of the intercoach gap, and also a complete new design of, uh, of the nose of the, of the trains. And we know that this kind of mitigation measure could have an effect uh, on, the, on the radiation because we know the location, we know the origin of the noise, so we can imagine already some, some kind of, uh, of mitigation measure. But, and of course, all this improvement could not be implemented uh, on all high speed trains uh, over the world because we have uh, some specific constraints and gauge in each country. Uh, so this kind of um, mitigation, so modification uh, of, of design could not be applied everywhere. So we have for each case to find, uh, to find uh, adapted solution. Next slide, please. Here, um, other, uh, other illustration of, um, of structural modification to reduce uh, the, the noisy aerodynamic phenomena. Um, and here you, you can see a modification just before the first bogey to, to, to modify the, the turbulent airflow. And uh, on the right, you have some uh, picture around uh, concerning the pantograph. <coughs> And uh, it's it's uh, it's some result um, of an um, uh, a work of optimization of the pantograph to reduce to reduce the noise, and uh, it's a good link to the to the next part of our presentation because we we know that um, and indeed numerical simulation could help the redesign uh, of the of the of the trend and uh, could help to find uh, to find a solution so next slide please so it's 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 a good transition to the next part of our presentation which uh, uh, concerns the modeling approach uh, we decide to make uh, a focus on this uh, on this uh, approach in our presentation uh, the main way to produce uh, aeroacoustic calculation, because modeling, it's, it's a good way to, to, to study this phenomena um, and to calculate uh, so the sound power level of the different noise sources due to the aerodynamic is to use aeroacoustic analogies. This analogies is, uh, con consists to separate in two steps the global calculations that we can do on aeroacoustic. First one is to quantify the source term by CFD calculation. It's unsteady and compressible CFD modelization. It's the it's main point to, to catch the unsteady uh, behavior. 
of the airflow um, at, um, around the height between. And the second one is the calculation of the noise radiation in far field, so far from the turbulent area where the dynamic pressure is very higher than acoustic one. So we, we, we are able to catch the, the noise, the noise radiation far from the, far from the turbulent um, area. And then with this calculation of uh, the sound pressure level all around, allow us to achieve um, a calculation of sound power level. Next slide, please. And uh, concerning these two steps, CFD and acoustic radiation, um, uh, there are different models that we can use for the two steps, for the CFD and the, the acoustic radiation, as you can see on this slide. And, uh, but um, all these methodologies differ in their accuracy and numerical cost. So we can choose different methodology and it depends of the what are our objective in terms of accuracy and what we can, um, when we can um, uh, use as numerical uh, effort. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so here, it just to summarize the modeling ap approach uh, with this diagram, we have the CAD work, the meshing, the meshing work part, uh, structural part, and uh, and the air uh, around the train, the CFD calculation, and then acoustic radiation. This approach is uh, at the end very uh, interesting because it, it can provide us very interesting data as a sound power level of the different zone, nose, photograph, for example and also the directivity of the sources. Um, and then we can use it at the end to rank the different sources and uh, to test new design. Next slide, please. Here's some, uh, some pictures, some example of turbulent flow velocity calculation and dynamic pressure around the first bogey. It's some example of what we can do with calculation. But another way, and the main <laughs> way, is, uh, is um, also to, to realize some measurements to, to quantify aeroacoustic noise sources. So I let Gennaro to present this part. Yeah. Um, so next slide. Um, yeah, um, like uh, yeah, rightly say, uh, Claire, uh, measurement uh, for sure is a good way of uh, characterize, identify noise sources. Generally, this can be used in order to improve uh, the design uh, of the mitigation because depending uh, uh, if you know your train is on a bottom, a cutting, or or the top on an embankment, you might have different noise radiation and so a different impact and different way to uh, design your mitigation. Of course, uh, uh, we would like to uh, also improve uh, the rolling stock specification in order to have a quieter train and be a good neighbor. And then, of course, uh, this measurement can be used in order to improve the prediction of rolling stock emission. Next slide. Uh, generally, uh, measurement can help us and investigate aerodynamic noise sources. In general, there are two ways of doing things. Uh, first one is uh, uh, using a wind tunnel uh, test, and another one doing a measurement in the field. Uh, of course, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the wind tunnel test uh, uh, can provide uh, flow control uh, condition in order uh, uh, to uh, quantify the aerodynamic sources. This can be combined with measurement, but of course there is a big influence on the noise from the uh, tunnel itself. Next slide. Uh, we can uh, uh, characterize uh, measurement through the field test. So we can do it through array, uh, directive microphone. Uh, if we want to characterize the top of the train, we can use a microphone behind the barrier. We can also have a measurement uh, uh, with the sensor installed on the train in order to characterize the source properly. Or for example, we can use element like catenary portal uh, in order to uh, set up some additional instrumentation in order to better characterize the noise. Or we can use all this method altogether. Of course, from an infrastructure point of view, uh, we are going to look for something which is easy to understand uh, uh, with the 
uh, good repeatability and uh, minimum uh, 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 processing. Uh, for example, next slide, uh, we could uh, we could combine, uh, we could try to uh, rationalize this with some matrix and try to draw uh, pros and cons. Uh, next slide. Uh, so uh, in terms of uh, what we have seen in this presentation, of course, we have a numerical model and measurement uh, for assessing area noise, which are not uh, typically used by railway operator infrastructure. This is mainly done by uh, rolling stock manufacturer. But uh, the operator infrastructure need a better way of uh, evaluate high speed rolling stock characteristic. Uh, the TSI uh, does not specify aerodynamic noise sources, so it's difficult to specify performance uh, of aerodynamic noise sources. And also ISO uh, does not uh, allow the characterization of aerodynamic noise sources. So it's quite difficult to uh, quantify, verify uh, this kind of property. This also are one of the reasons why uh, we promoted uh, Aero Noise project, which will be introduced and also is technically led by Claire. Thank you, Gennaro. So uh, next slide, please. Yeah, here yeah, is a short presentation concerning the Aero Noise project. So it's a, it's a, an UIC project managed by the UIC TTI sector. And uh, it's a 30 months project uh, which started in, uh, last year in February, so one year. Uh, the different participant partners of the project is uh, Adif, Traffic Ferket, Slovenian Railways, SNCF, I'd Speak 2 and Banelor. And uh, the main um, goal is um, to, to, to develop uh, an improved noise emission measurement uh, concerning high speed train to, to address the issue of aerodynamic noise pollution, to establish noise criteria um, uh, in this, in this, uh, for, for this item, and to, to also to, to, to make and to, to, to think about optimized design uh, concerning the noise barrier. And at the end, the deliverable uh, will be a new um, IRS, uh, so International Railway Solution from UIC, a measurement and analysis system to characterize the aerodynamic noise of high speed train. So next slide, please. And uh, for that, we, we, we agreed uh, together to, to that uh, we need to provide a novel and innovative uh, technique to quantify uh, this uh, source. Uh, um, the type of source to be concerning is the aerodynamic sources, and the method will be able to characterize all the main noisy area as we present before. Uh, it should be included in pass by noise measurement uh, relevant for authorization. And it, could, it should be applicable on TSI track and uh, also any type of track. And uh, at the end, to provide a, a global pressure level of aeroacoustic radiation, at least in third octave band. And this new standard should be simple in terms of uh, setup and uh, in terms of time and, and cost. So next slide, please. And um, we organize uh, this project in two work packages, uh, one uh, concerning the benchmark studies, the other concerning the main modeling action to, to, to define this new uh, standard. And uh, then uh, at the end, uh, uh, guidance and demonstration of uh, the, 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 the good effect and the, the, the improvement and this new, the new standard. So we, we, we we think and we 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 imagine that this new project will help railways to 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 make railways um, uh, a good neighbor uh, by uh, by um, by this specific work and uh, this uh, specific work on aero acoustic and uh, this uh, development of this new uh, standard. So thank you very much for your att attention. Uh, thank you.